Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we talk about why people find ENFPs confusing. Now, I've spent 10 years researching the human mind and the eight cognitive functions, and what I've found is that the mind is a mess. We have different processes and different needs, so we're not just our dominant function. So, as an ENFP, you're not just your extroverted intuition. And because of that, we can't pigeonhole you in as the messy, chaotic, crazy person. We have to acknowledge that you have multiple sides. So let's talk about the four sides of the ENFP personality type, starting with the dominant type, the journalist or the seeker. So when the ENFP is at their best, in their dominant state, they are information gatherers. They are people that seek to gain information and validate information with introverted feeling and extroverted intuition. That means the ENFP is not just interested in learning things, but also in testing if they are true and if they match with their personal value system. So the ENFP is constantly taste testing. How do I feel about everything that I see and learn and observe? What can I observe about the world, what connections can I draw from what I see. The ENFP is like a detective or researcher that constantly peers into and tries to find out as much as possible about everything that's happening in the world. Now, besides that, the ENFP is trying to make sense of and understand it from their own point of view. If I was in that person's shoes, how would I react? And if I was in that person's shoes, how would I react? The ENFP's ability to put themselves in other people's shoes instinctively and quickly with introverted feeling and to draw accurate conclusions about a person's authenticity or values or honesty is fascinating. And it's what makes the ENFP a potentially talented journalist. We have the artist. So when the ENFP goes into introverted sensing instead of extroverted intuition to process and rest on their experiences and make sense of what they observe, they often try to find ways to find or reinterpret different situations based on their per personal experiences. When the ENFP is alone, and that's because this is often their most hidden face, the ENFP is very, very artistic and the person the ENFP is able to often go through and sift through many details in what they observe and what they've processed and what patterns they've gathered over time. And they're able to take and unpack these to kind of find new ways of looking at them. So the ENFP's ability to look at something and see it in a new way every single time is one of the ENFP's core facets and talents. Now the ENFP is often very artistic. And so a lot of the time what they try to do is they try to transform themselves. And so when they go into introverted sensing, they often think about how they can apply their experiences to themselves. What is a way to express myself, a new and original or unique way to express who I am? And so because of this, many of people who are in the subtype feel drawn towards artistic expression or cosplay or acting or some kind of manner of creating a new identity. So the introverted feeling and introverted sensing face makes you as an ENFP more focused with how you can express yourself and who you really are. And when you're in this phase, that's when you really confront your innermost feelings. And that's when you think about, you know, what can I take and draw from these experiences and how can I express myself to the world? The third phase is when the ENFP goes from extroverted intuition to extroverted thinking. And in this way, the ENFP becomes a little bit more aggressive. While the ENFP normally prefers to just observe and draw connections about the world, when the ENFP goes to extroverted thinking, they become more like detectives trying to prove something they already know to be true. They've already drawn connections. They've already judged what kind of a person you are. They already know kind of what kind of conclusion you have. Now they're just trying to prove it. They're trying to get evidence to uh, basically put it on the table and they're trying to find a logical way of explaining the things that they see. Because the ENFP first starts as an idealist who just observes, who just knows things, for the ENFP, the second step is to try to find and verify and explain it with extroverted thinking. So in this phase, the ENFP is a little bit more aggressive and a bit more combative. In some ways, they're like interrogators or sheriffs. They're trying to determine what is going on and they're trying to also apply and put something to practice. So they're more focused on judgment and expressing their judgment to the outer world. And so they want to kind of uh, instill order or instill a structure, or instill or systematize their intuition in a way that they normally wouldn't do. Finally, the fourth subtype or state that an ENFP can switch to is the introverted sensing and extroverted thinking state. In the introverted sensing and extroverted thinking state, the ENFP is a lot more like a builder. 
Yeah, that's true. The ENFP is a surprisingly practical type. Most ENFPs that I know are pretty good at anything from decorating their house to coming up with a unique way to organize things. And in some ways they have a very inventive spirit, just like ENTP personality type. It's only that because they have extroverted thinking in their stack, the ENFP is better at finding ways to use what they have. Instead of creating something completely new, the ENFP is good at combining things that already exist. So the ENFP's ability to take on what they've learned and what they've explored and to connect it in new ways and to put it together and to create a structure around them is very important. Now, I want to talk more about this subtype and because I want you as an ENFP to understand something about yourself. Why is it as an ENFP that you feel both the burning desire for freedom and change, but also for stability and consistency? The truth is you need both to be happy as an ENFP. You have both of those needs inside of you. As an ENFP, it's super important that you have both the stability and congruity that you can feel that there are things in your life that are lasting and reliable and dependable, but also that there are things in your life that you can constantly change and evolve. If neither of these are there, you're gonna feel terrible. If one of these are missing, you're going to feel terrible. You need to find a way to manage and combine both. And that means you need to learn to switch between these states when needed. You need to allow room for yourself to experience both of these things. You're allowed to feel stressed or anxious when you're in new situations or when you're making big changes in your life. It's natural to feel homesick when you're out traveling. It's natural to uh, feel and desire or urge to uh, find uh, lasting commitments in relationships at the same time as wanting freedom to try new things and meet new people. You should never feel that you have to deny either of these sides in yourself. So, what do you think? Which of these states are you in right now? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you're having a great day.